He's like the love, love, love and music. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner, and this is my review for uh, Little Woman Atlanta. This is season four, episode three. I don't know why it seems like this is past episode three. I don't know why I feel like this is like episode five or even six. I'm not sure. It could be because it's 2 11 in the morning and my ass is tired. But however, I wanted to get this video done tonight to get it uploaded overnight, to be uploaded overnight, and then I ain't got to worry about it. I hope everyone had a great day. As I said earlier, my Black Ink Crew Chicago, not Chicago, Black Ink Crew New York review that I did. If you have not checked that out, go ahead. The video was right right below this one, actually, um, to see how that review went. Um, so this episode, I think I was a little bit bored, honestly. You know, the big thing that they were um, talking about happening was Andrea telling her parents that she is pregnant at the baby's baby shower, baby shower, at the baby's birthday party, um, which didn't happen to the end. But I felt like this episode was like a lot of filler. It was a lot of, I, but I'm like, man, maybe the ladies are just that boring this season. I'm not sure. Um, but I was just kind of like, you know, let's get, you know, through this particular episode because it wasn't that much. Um, you know, we see the beginning of it starting off where, um, we see Minnie, Amanda, and Andrea going to get tattoos. Um, it's some, it's like a female tattoo group who travels the world and they're there in Atlanta. So Minnie wants to go get a tattoo. So she go down there. She's asking the twins, say, hey, y'all should get one too. But we know Andrea can't get a tattoo because she's pregnant. Um, so she's like, well, no, I don't think I'm going to get a tattoo. Um, Amanda said she would get one, like she tried to take one for the team. Um, but I ain't see her get one. And why was Minnie, I mean, Minnie didn't have no damn shoes on. I'm like, where's her shoes? Why is she sitting in the tattoo chair barefoot? You know, I don't... I mean, is it, cause I'm, you know, I'm only, I'm not, I'm not a little person, but I'm only five, two, barely, I'm like five, one and three, four, I'm five, two. Okay. Let's get in with us. Um, but I sometimes when I'm sitting in here, I guess I do take my shoes off, but not if I'm in like a public place or whatever. Like I wouldn't just be like really barefoot. I mean, she was like barefoot in the tattoo chair. I'm like, I just didn't get it. Um. So, you know, she's getting tattooed with, like, a little butterfly in her aunt's name. It was, you know, whatever. It's cute. But then Andrea and Amanda like, okay, we're going to go outside and get some tacos. I'm like, what kind of friends don't stay inside and watch their friend get a tattoo? And I'm like, and I thought Amanda was getting a tattoo, but she didn't get no damn tattoo. So, you know, they get outside and they're basically just talking about, um, um, telling the parents that Andrea's pregnant. Um, she's like, yeah, I'm going to tell them that, you know the birthday party because I feel like because it's a kid's birthday party they can't like really flip out can nobody really get mad because it's children around yay and I'm like I mean it is a good idea however you know you're a grown adult you know you're it's your life to live no matter how much they may might not agree with your decisions you know Amanda says how you know Chris should be able to be a man and step into the plate and be there for his child well, therefore, his pregnant girlfriend, but also there to be a father. She's like, look, he laid down with you and got you pregnant. You know, he, he should be there and be a man to stick, man to stick by you. Now, he didn't love twice, okay? Let's see if he leave a third time. Um, So, from there, we see Juicy meeting with some guy named Johnny, who's a manager in Atlanta. And she's like, you've been calling me and calling me, you know, talking about management or whatever. I don't need no manager. I'm good. I'm managing myself. I'm booked and busy. And he like, we well, you know you the, what do you say? You like, you the voice of Atlanta. You know you want on one of the hottest, one of the hottest stations in, in Atlanta. I know I'm the 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 shit in Atlanta. I'm like juicy. Calm down, boo boo. Just calm down, like two pigs. You know what I'm saying? Don't toot your horn too much. Let's just calm it down. Um, but he then she thinking he wants to manage her, and she like I don't need the manager, but he wants her to join with him in a partnership to start a management company. I don't think it's smart. Um, anyway, but it is what it is. Um, and he like, I want to manage, you know, rappers, singers, you know, uh, actors, um, radio personalities, really start, just everybody. I don't want to do just, just rappers. I want to do everybody. I mean, I think that's smart, but I'm like, of all the people you want us to partner, we want to partner with Juicy, not trying to knock Juicy for her talents or her accolades or whatever, but I'm like, 
okay, you know, it is what it is. So she just said how, you know, she's busy, how she, you know, has enough time to try to manage herself. She can't see herself trying to manage other people's careers as well because she's just so busy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, because I'm the queen of Atlanta, honey. I'm like, are you the queen of Chelsea? I've heard her say that before. And I'm like, like, is she the queen? Like, really? I'm not from Atlanta, so I don't know. So please let me know if I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because I know the queen of Detroit. Aretha Franklin. <laughs> and I was joking. But you know what I'm saying? I don't know who the queen of Atlanta is, so it is what it is. So she like, look, I'll think about it because, you know, it's a big decision. I'll let you know. And then we see that. Um, We see a little scene with Moni, Mon Money and uh, Tanya shopping for, like, baby stuff or whatnot. And, you know, Tanya admitting that sometimes she thinks about having another baby, but then she remembers how hard it was when she had her first ch her, her child, um, where she's like, I was pregnant, you know, I, w I didn't go into labor, so they induced me. They then tried to wait to see if I could have it naturally. Um, I didn't progress naturally, so I ended up having, having an emergency C-section. Um, the baby went into distress. It was a whole bunch going on with her first pregnancy. You know, she ended up having to have the C-section. It was kind of just crazy or whatever. And so, you know, Tanya said, well, you know, that was a long time ago, 11 years. You know, things have changed since then. You can kind of figure out why you had to have that C-section, get things figured out, and know ahead of time what your options are versus, you know, having to wait until you are in labor to figure out all the stuff going on and whatnot. Um, and this is how, you know, if you have another baby, it might be different. Um, money says, you know, well, yeah, that's true. Like, but however, I'm still having issues with my first baby. So before I even think about having another baby, I need to get my first child squared away. And not only that, more than always out of town, you know, working. And that's true. Girl, don't be trying to have no babies out here. And you ain't got a husband at home, you know what I'm saying? Or if you do have, have another child, be aware that you're going to, for the most part, be a single parent because your husband's going to be on the road working. And, you know, that's something else to call into question. So, yeah. Um, and then see Amanda, Sam, and Minnie. And they're basically planning um, Audrey's birthday party because um, Andrea is just so stressed out of our parents coming and just being pregnant and keeping it a secret. She ain't got time, which I don't know how she ain't got time, but okay, it's one thing. You know, your sister and the baby god mama and then the other girl can go play the party. You know, it is what it is. Um, we see that Sam isn't wearing her wig. And she says this because, you know, to her, the wig just didn't look natural on her. I get it. She's not used to wearing wigs. And she's like, so she just prefers to wear her own hair on a regular basis. And then she'll wear the wigs on special occasions until she's just more used to wearing them. And that's fair. You know, everybody can't put on a wig. I'm like, okay, I'm wearing a wig every day. Everybody don't like that. Like, I wore a wig to my auntie's um, birthday party. And I couldn't even wear it the whole day all night. I like, I mean, I wore it for like an hour. And I'm like, look, take all the pictures you need to take. Because when I pull this wig off, I ain't taking no pictures. Because she had a 20 thing birthday party. Um, and I was like, you know, I'm not about that life. So I completely get it. Um... And then, you know, Amanda's saying how, you know, she just hopes the party goes off without a hitch for the baby birthday party. You know, the she hopes it's not an open to drama or whatever. Um, since her parents don't like Chris. And me like, oh, the party be fine. It's the baby's party. You know, it's going to be great. And Amanda in her head thinking, if only she knew it's going to be a baby brown bombshell drop at the party. So we don't know how things going to go. And I'm like, well, you know, that is technically true. Um, Next, yes, I'm shooting this because it's real quick and it's, and it's late. I don't want to... You know, draw y'all out. But I'm still being my funny self. See what I'm saying? Don't judge me. Um, we then see Juicy Minnie with Money and Money, Money and Sam. Um, and they're talking about her wanting to do the management company. And, you know, where we have Sam saying, you know, do you think you're doing your, doing too much? You know, do you think you're spreading yourself too thin? You know, just what, what all you have going on plus doing this. Where we have uh, Money saying, girl, you better get while getting this good. You know what I'm saying? Think about that money. Get that money and do what everything you can do and I agree with them both like she had to think about both sides of the coin you know it's not an easy decision you gotta weigh the pros and the cons um but then they asked her like are there any acts that she would be thinking about if she was to do it to bring to the table now she brings up um some girl who I guess the twins had beef with I think when this person was on the season I wasn't watching it so I don't know who she is or what the beef was um her name is Abira Another little person, so I don't know what she is. But when she brings her up, they're like, what? Are you serious? You know, don't you think the twins would have a problem with that? And she said, you know, I do think, you know what I'm saying, they would. Um, But, you know, me and Abreva have 
became friends and she was like so i wouldn't be trying to start no drama with them or whatever you know i do think they might be mad and upset but you know i ain't trying to cause no trouble juicy always trying to cause trouble <laughs> no matter what she doing um because that's just you know that's just i think juicy just kind of a you know she's a, a little bit of a messy person and you know money just says well you know what if you're going to be in the management game you know you can't think like that you have to really separate friendship and and business and that's honestly true but at the same time separating friendship and business I still don't think I will work with somebody who's like an enemy of my real friend you know what I'm saying like I just couldn't do that um or I would at least have a con conversation with my friend before I make any moves um because if the business doesn't work out, you don't want to burn a business deal and burn a friendship. You know what I'm saying? You have to, there's a thin line between the two. And that's in my opinion. Um, with ending the, the twin, the twin sisters, the twins of parents are in town and they're actually staying with Amanda. They can't stay with Andrea because once she's had her president, her pregnancy and two, no one's been over there except Minnie and her ass popped up. So, you know, they get to, um, Amanda's house and Amanda's of course have to see them her mom and her dad and also um they have Andrea's son with them and yeah Andrea's son with them who they haven't saw in a while either and they're like the parents have seen how they really haven't talked to her the mom so when I texted her before and she said she had a headache or something and Amanda was saying how she hadn't talked to her either so she knew what was going on but we do see, you know, how her son was asked for Mama Drea. I'm like, her son called her Mama Drea, not his mama. But okay, it is what it is. Um, we then see, you know, and then we see the dad say how, you know, we haven't, we, don't, we can't even go to her house because we don't have the address. You know what I'm saying? I, we can't go over there. And then we see, you know, Andrea shows up. She has the daughter. And it's a whole happy meeting and everything like that. But, you know, they then her parents ask her, like, you know, why I can't we come over to your house? Is it because Chris doesn't want us over there? And, you know, of course, um, Andrea starts crying because she's emotional because she's pregnant. And she's like, you know, I just had a bad day today. I just don't want to talk about this. And, you know, she's crying. And, you know, Amanda's like, look, even if Chris doesn't want them over there, um, he has to just realize that, you know, she said, you know, he has to realize, point blank, period, that these are our parents and they aren't going anywhere. And, I mean, that's true. It's one thing if your spouse or your boyfriend or whoever don't like your parents, you can not like them, but you're going to be around them. You have no choice. Those are my parents. They're not going anywhere. So, you know, just deal with it is what I would have said. I don't, you know, but Andrea's all a different breed of person. Um, and then see a scene where Monty is talking to her son and she's basically asking him, you know, about him moving to Atlanta. And he basically says how he does not want to move to Atlanta, how he wants to stay with his dad because he would miss his friends, he would miss his, his cousins. Because, again, he's 11. He has a, He's a kid. He has a whole life there. And it's not easy to tell kids, oh, you can make all new friends. They don't want to make new friends at 11. They want to keep their old friends at 11. Um, and he's saying, like, your mom, you know, I do love you and I do miss you, but, you know, I don't want to move. I want to stay here with my friends and my cousins. And... Money, of course, is heartbroken, and she is assuming that his dad must be in his ear, convincing him not to come back with me, and I think that's crazy, because before, he wanted to leave. I mean, he might have just thought about it. He didn't want to leave. No kid wants to move away from home from their kid, from their friends. They don't, you know, even if they miss a parent. Um, Because one thing, it'll be a big change, regardless of anything else, especially if they've never left home. You know what I'm saying? There's one thing, they've all, they're always visiting, so they know what it's like there. I don't think he's ever visited like that to that extent that they've shown, shown on the show. Um, so she, of course, is sad or whatever. And we see that that side, that, that scene. Um, we see a scene where the twins, the mom, and the kids go to like a zoo or something like that. And it's a cute little look. You know what I'm saying? Andrea's there with both, her, with, with, with both the kids. Her sister, her mom, they're bonding and everything. And once on the, on the inside... Mom can tell us something up with Andrea, but she just can't put her finger on it. You know, um, Andrea said how the couple's trip did help her and Chris. It helped her realize that she can always be yelling and fussing and cussing at him and raising her voice and just saying mean and rude and hurtful things. And the mom and, <laughs> and the man was like, well, you know, you do it because he's left you twice with the kids. So, you know, it's kind of not a, you know, cut and dry thing or whatever. And then, you know, like, the baby starts crying and so she had to walk away. And then mom is asking Amanda, like... 
there's something going on with her and you know I just don't know mamas always know okay they always know um, that something is up and she's like you know what you know I don't know what's going on with them you know I stay out of it just so that she doesn't get bad at me and it doesn't you know mess up our relationship or whatever I just stay clear of it um and then the mom then asked Andrea because Andrea walks back in and she's like you know well why can't we come to your house you know I just don't understand that you know um is it because Chris doesn't want us there and she's like you know I don't mind you guys being there because you're my parents and I love you she's like but you know you know he do kind of have an issue with y'all being there but he's gonna have to get over it you know because you guys are my parents but what she didn't say was she should just say y'all can come over you know at one point she went up and she was saying something like better not finish unpacking even if you're not done unpacking you can still have company over to say hello you know, so that was a lame excuse. Um, she just know it's difficult because of how Chris feels. And she feels like she's in the middle. But at the end of the day, you need to pick who supports you. And that's your family. Point blank period. Because if Chris has to leave you, you know, they're all you're going to have. So you need to realize that. Um, and again, you know, I understand how, you know, Chris needs to understand that, you know, those are our parents and they're not going anywhere. Like she said before, duh, duh, duh. Um, and mom was like, you know, he should be thanking us because, again, her parents are raising their son um, on a full-time basis. Bro, you should be kissing our ass all day. All day, every day. Um, and, you know, Andrea's like, you know, I, I'm not here to have this conversation. You know, this is supposed to be a happy time with the kids. You know, I'm not talking about this here. And she's, again, getting emotional because her ass is pregnant. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> I think we're like two things left. You know, we see Monty and Morgan talking or whatever. And, you know, Morgan see her pouring a big ass glass of wine. I'm like, girl, can you drink all of that? And he like, are we finna party? Who was the celebration? Because it was a full, full glass of, I mean, like, a nice size glass of wine. And she like, there ain't no celebration. He like, well, let me pour my drink. And then he pull out some Crown uh, Royal, some Crown Royal, and like, Pepsi or Coke or whatever. I'm like, okay, he making himself a little stiff drink. And she like, well, no, I'm finna call, you know, my baby daddy, my child's father, and discuss because D2 don't want to move here and I want to talk about it. And he like, well, okay, well, I'm just going to sit right here and let you have con the conversation because he's FaceTiming him. But he still sat where he can see her and, you know, still be supportive of her, but not be like in the camera in the conversation. So, you know, she called her, her child's father and you know she's basically saying how you know she's hurt that he doesn't want to move to um atlanta and you know child's father is like well you know it is what it is you know what's done is done and you know i got him and you know he doesn't want to move there and of course she's emotional she said like well that's not fair because i love him and i want to be with him too and it's hard for me to see people here with their kids you know i can't be my child every day and um, I'm coming to that realization that, you know, it's not even about me anymore. It's about what he wants and how he doesn't want to come here. It's like, so it's just hard for me to wrap my head around that. Um, and he's like, you know what I'm saying? That's when he said, you know, what's done is done. It is what it is. And, but she like, she was saying how she didn't want to give up trying to get him to move there. And then he said, well, you know, you can't change, you know, what's done is done. You can't keep going at it. You know, he don't want to move there. Um, and she's crying and saying how she knows she has to accept that he is choosing to stay with his father. That he's choosing not to move with back with her, but it still hurts her. And then he's like, you know what? I would feel the same way if the roles were reversed. That he wanted to stay with you and not me. I would feel that pain, so I get it. But he does say, you know, um, you can get him for the whole summer. You know, whenever he's off on break, you can get him. And then if he has, like, breaks on the weekends and stuff, and if he wants to come up there... Um, and you want to come down there, then, you know, we can get that arranged or whatever. Um, we we going to make this work. And I'm like, see, that's what I agree with. I don't think it has to be an all or nothing type of thing. I do think that she should get visitation. Like he should be able to come visit her in Atlanta, um, whenever he's on break, um, or even, you know, in alternate holidays or whatever, but just make it so that he can get more comfortable being in Atlanta. Cause let's say now that he's in middle school, he doesn't want to move to Atlanta. It could be a thing where he, he gets to high school and he might want to change to move out there with his mama when he's, you know, but when he's used to being back and forth, he's used to both homes. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a good, um, first step. And, you know, they end the conversation, the, the phone conversation, they, they aren't at, at, at each other's throats and they are to like a clear understanding that it ain't even either one of them making the decision for the most part, as far as we see, is D2 who wants to stay with his father. Um, 
and she, you know, she's crying when she hangs the phone. And I loved how she walked to Moreland and Moreland embraced. I'm just like, okay, oh, Moreland loves his wife. You know, it was very, um, a touching scene, I'll say. So, yeah. Um, we then see Juicy meeting back up the, with the Johnny dude and saying, you're like, yeah, she'll go ahead and join the management company with him. <sighs> I think it's going to be a crock of bullshit, but I'm letting it be what it's going to be for TV. Um... She's bringing up how she wanted to sign the girl Abria, Abria and he said how they need to sign the twins, because she's like, we got her, you know, they are in between, like, management companies or whatever right now, so I don't know if we can get them or not, because they still, like, have a deal somewhere, and he's like, no, we have to sign the twins, we have to sign the twins, but little does she know, Andrea's pregnant, so they ain't really doing, they're not going to be doing anything as of yet anyway, and then she also said, well, we have to see if they'll even be willing to work under the same management company, because... They don't get along. And I think the reason he picked Juicy was because he wanted to get the twins. Basically. Or even manage the people, the little people on different shows. Because you have an in of you with a person on the cast. That's not personal opinion. You know, so she said they'll get it figured out with how they can get Abria and the twins on a roster. But I'm like, y'all first need to make a damn company. But it is what it is. Um, and then the last scene was them at the birthday party. Um, the birthday party was really cute. It was like an under the sea mermaid theme. And, you know, they had Aubrey dressed up as a little mermaid. She was so cute. Um, but it was so awkward to see Chris walk in and the parents and him, like, did not speak. You know, they kind of, like, had to look around each other, um, which is awkward for me because I'm looking like... I think that their son was near them, and I didn't see Chris, like, go and embrace his son. So, I'm looking like, did he see, has he seen his son since his son has been there? That part to me was a little bit weird. Um, and they just don't interact. You know, there's even a point where we see, you know, Aubrey's crying, and Chris has her. And the grandmother has to, like, come over there and get her. But it's still, like, it was, like, it was just awkward. It was really, really awkward. Um... And, you know, they're, everyone's there having a good time or whatever, even with a little awkward tension about it. And, um, Andrea then announced that she says she's pregnant. You know, so we have something to tell you guys. We're pregnant. And, like, the, like the other ladies were like, oh, I knew it. Oh, that's crazy, you know. And the guy's like, yeah, you know, you got another one. You know, Morland said, well, they say be, be fruitful and multiply. And you damn near being fruitful and multiply. Third baby, yes, absolutely. Um, but her parents was like not happy like they went and sat down they did not say congratulations it was very very awkward um and then they had like a little side conversation and the parents just said how you know they can't say that they're happy they can't say anything because i think they were just in a state of shock like girl why you have another baby with this man and y'all already struggling with the two kids y'all have and we had y'all son so what are y'all doing and you know um they're like you know you're gonna need support you know when you were pregnant with Aubrey, you know, we had um, Andre, so you were good. But now you're going to be pregnant with a baby and then have another baby who's already, you know, needy and, and needs things. So you're going to need all the support you can get from your significant other or whatever you want to call him. I'm like, my man daddy was not letting her ass go easy. They like, look, you have to live with this choice that you guys are making. And she was, you know, Andrea was saying like, you know, we're we're happy, but we're also nervous because it is another baby. And, you know, they were breaking up how, you know, he doesn't even call um, Andre a lot or whatever. You know, Andre's always asking, like, why you guys are here with Aubrey and why we have him. You know, where's mommy, where's daddy? And, you know, she's like, well, you know, Chris does call him off, and does call him. And they're like, yeah, but he doesn't call him enough for what the child wants. The child wants more communication and he doesn't do that. And it's because of how, you know, he has this whole prideful thing up and he shouldn't have he shouldn't have that. He should be open and, you know, to to, to whatever. And I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, you know, he's trying to be a better person. He's trying to be a better dad. Um and I'm like, well I you know, I guess that's what it is. But she's like, you know, at this point, you know, it is what it is because I'm pregnant. And I'm like, it's just you know, I'm like, okay. And the episode went off. So, like I said, it was an easy breezy episode. You know, that was less than 25 minutes. Um, And that means it's only 2.34. I can go cut this video off and get it uploaded while also watching, like, Family Guy on TV, on Family, on, uh, what is this? On Adult Swim. I can watch some cartoons. I can take this damn lipstick off. Take my bun out of my head. Yay! So, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. 
I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review of Little Women at Let. Atlanta uh, season 4 episode 3 I swear this seems like it is like episode 5 um, I hope it, the rest I think next week's episode does like interesting um, because they bring up the Abriva girl who's going to be on here um, so let's see how that goes with the twins finding out that Minnie is trying not Minnie um, Juicy's trying to sign her to the, her management company we shall see so until next time people I am Jay Lee this is Jay's Corner Peace.